everyone. Hello, YouTubers. This is Anonymous T. Hope you're having an amazing day today. Today, I am reacting and reviewing Power Book 2 Ghosts, Season 2, Episode 4 of the episode is entitled Getting These Ends in OMG. So right off the bat, the biggest bombshell is Zeke is Monet and Mecca, a.k.a. Dante's kid. What? What is going on? And what is the timeline? Like, I think in my head when he kept saying our son, I was thinking, oh, maybe he's Cain's father. But that didn't make sense either. So because of how many years apart him and Monet spent. But then I was trying to figure out timeline wise. I'm like, OK, well, how old is Zeke supposed to be? Is he like 18, 19, 20? Like how old is he like how old is he is he a freshman is he a sophomore that was the part that was going in my mind that i was trying to wrap my brain around this so essentially how this is revealed is zeke um needs a million dollars basically to pay for this attorney um you know method man because he feels that you know he needs a million dollars to put out all the stops you know with press with media with all of this stuff for um zeke's defense and to get a biased jury essentially to you know go in zeke's favor however there has been so many twists and turns um, so basically, Monet has enlisted the family on ways that they can hurry up and raise this money. So Diana, she meets up with Effie to try to do some scamming at some high-end stores. And I've got to say, props to whoever is in the makeup and hair department. We needed to see Effie with her hair down and makeup like this, like a long time ago, like back on power. Um, <laughs> like the un original power. Um, she looks so much like a young Ashanti to me. Like I almost didn't even recognize her. And it was a nice change of pace from how we usually see Effie. Um, but yeah, hopefully in the future she could be more dressed up, more professional. And you would think with her being, you know, big woman on campus, being a big time drug dealer, she would look the part too and kind of, um, you know, even Kane and um, Tariq, you know, you see them in like high end designer clothes and everything else. And um, you never see Effie. She always looks like she is um you know like one pet paycheck away from not being able to be able to go to yale so um so that is pretty interesting so anyways drew his role is he enlists everett from the basketball team to do a protest and refuse to play any basketball games until um ezekiel is cleared um, from the murder charges and also raised a GoFundMe of some sort where they raised a lot of money. And then there also was a love scene between Drew and um, Everett as well. Um, I don't know if it was makeup sex or whatever, but it basically came crashing down because then after the fact, after Zeke bombed the interview, um, Drew and Everett essentially broke up again and Everett was asking questions that he already knew the answer to and it just ended up being a hot mess and a waste. So after that, um, also we are dealing with Kane who's trying to flip some money. So he's up here hitting some licks and um, then he even ends up enlisting Brayden to rob a jewelry store um, to hopefully flip that money to get that over to Method Man. However, all of that didn't matter because Mr. Dante, Mr. Mecca, a.k.a. Ezekiel's father, ends up paying the million dollar um, retainer for Method Man. And my question is, does Mecca, a.k.a. Dante, ever intend on forging a relationship with his son, Ezekiel, does Monet ever anticipate ever telling, you know, Zeke that this is, you know, she's actually not Auntie Monet, she's Mother Monet. Um, and what is going to happen in the fallout when all of the other kids find this out? Are they going to feel used and betrayed that they gave up pretty much all of their life and their hopes and dreams for their big brother? And even still, it's not enough. Even still, he could still end up going to jail 
or worse when it's all said and done? And then my million dollar question is, does Lorenzo know? Because also in this episode, um, you know, Monet, once she found out either the contractors or somebody robbed her from the bar of her secret stash where she keeps money, um, while they were supposed to be repairing and fixing her windows since they got shot at or what have you, um, you know, she then enlists and goes to Lorenzo to their meetup place for their conjugal visits. And, you know, she asks him if she can have his signature so they could mortgage the house and um, essentially pay that money back once everything is cleared with Zeke's case. And he says, absolutely not. He says if it was for one of the kids, absolutely he would. But he said, absolutely not for Zeke. So my question is, what is the timeline between Monet and Mecca, a.k.a. Dante, and when Monet and Lorenzo got together and does Lorenzo know about Zeke? Does he know that Monet is really the mother of Zeke? Does he know about Dante, a.k.a. Mecca, being the father? Like, what is the tea? Because this was a bomb that kind of just came out of nowhere. So then we go back also to the murder investigation where now all of a sudden, you know, everybody's meeting at Stansfield. Kevin's there. Carrie is there. Um, Tate is there. The dean is there. Simon is there because he's one of the trustees on the board. And so I was kind of confused at first because it sounded like at first I thought they were firing Carrie, but it sounds like she's being removed maybe from one of the programs temporarily and Tate's going to oversee the program, but she's still going to keep her teaching job for now is kind of what it sounded like um, because she still ended up teaching the ethics course a little bit later. So it sounds like maybe she's not going to be ahead of the program um, until the investigation concludes because Jabari and her were such close colleagues and then maybe it'll resume after the fact. And Tate's basically going to be her fill-in um, for PR purposes. So then Simon is grilling the detective because he wants to know why the detective is going so hard in the paint for Zeke, who is their basketball star of their program, and basically said if he doesn't lay up on him, that when he has dinner with the commissioner later in the week, he's going to ensure of it one way or the other because their school has a pr prestigious reputation to uphold and this murder investigation is killing the vibes. So, um, so that's on that. Also, what is going on is they still do not have Ramirez's body yet. So Kevin's theory now, which I don't even know how this is coming out of anywhere, but now all of a sudden he thinks that Zeke killed Jabari because he has motive and he allegedly finds out that Carrie and Jabari were still sleeping together, except for Zeke did not find that out until he was held up at the precinct the other night. So he wouldn't have known this information um, back when Jabari was murdered. Also, there is video footage that came out that shows um, Ezekiel at a nearby convenience store that is feet away from uh, Carrie's house. So therefore, they were nowhere near where Jabari actually got murdered, um, which was shortly, you know, away from campus. So that exonerates him for that. But now they're trying to go for this murder for hire angle. Um, except for, you know, essentially his alibi checks out that, you know, it's not going to be the case. And eventually they're going to find out when Ramirez's body comes up decomposed that there's no way Ramirez could have killed anyone because he was already dead. So then, um, Kane is still obsessed with trying to frame some things on Tariq. He is so obsessed with trying to take Tariq down just like Kevin is obsessed with trying to take down Carrie and it is just hilarious so now all of a sudden he is using Brayden to go on these licks they go on this one lick where he's trying to um I guess rob a trap house or something I don't know exactly what was going on with Kane 
but essentially it didn't go well because somebody came out and was about to shoot Brayden and then Kane of course causes chaos and shoots up the trap house and then hurries up and rides off into you know the getaway car with Brayden and it's just a hot mess like nobody knows what they're doing or what is going on Next is Miss Lauren, because now all of a sudden, Tate's brother, they are now also trying to lead the charge on the investigation into course correct now, because they are wondering now, since they have seen the hourglass shaped drugs appear, turn up, that maybe it could potentially be linked to Jabari's murder. And so now they are doing, so they did a deep search. They had police basically confiscate any of these course correct drugs from students' room. And so Lauren was one of the first people they were interviewing. And conveniently, Carrie shows up, you know, to basically coach Lauren that maybe she could wear a wire of some sort and capture any conversations that could be useful that could lead them to who is running the course correct app that people are getting drugs so i still don't see this ending well for lauren because i don't think i think the problem is going to be once she finds out that Tariq is somehow connected it's going to completely blow up in her face and she's gonna have to make a decision on what she is going to do with that information or if she is going to ignore it because she is crazy about Tariq. And so speaking of Tariq, um, also Effie makes it a point while she's out shopping with Diane to not hook up with Tariq, to not get romantically involved because she's going to get her heart broken. And then Diana reveals that she is a virgin and she still is kind of unsure on, you know, when and how she wants to lose her virginity. And Effie basically is coaching her that you, whenever you do lose your virginity, it's because you want to and not because it's somebody else or because you have this fantasy in your mind of what you think somebody else is versus who they really are. Then we move forward with also, um, you know, Zeke. Now all of a sudden, you know, he is holed up at Monet's house and, you know, the kids essentially are supposed to be taking turns watching him. And so essentially Monet enlisted Drew this time to watch Ezekiel while everybody else is out and about trying to raise the million dollars. And so then in the middle of this, this is when Drew leaves to then meet up with the other basketball player to not only hook up with him, but also come up with a plan to try to get some of the million dollars um, raised for the attorney retainer. Um, but in the midst of that, when Drew gets back, there is a reporter who is asking Ezekiel questions um you know about his whereabouts and everything else and then drew basically punches him and beats him up so now all of a sudden um that obviously creates an issue um so then method man has to come to monet's house and meet with the family and basically said that the only way that this reporter guy is not going to press charges is in exchange if Zeke does an interview with Jamel Hill. So Jamel Hill guest stars on this episode and it is hilarious. So essentially, you know, Method Man brings over a list of the questions that are going to be asked for this interview. Um, you know, he enlists Tariq to essentially coach Zeke on how to answer these questions because Zeke, um, you know, doesn't know how he all he knows is basketball. Um, for whatever reason, he was not taught any other life skills other than to just be good and play basketball because he was tall and he was good and everything else, but he was never taught street smarts, he was never taught anything else. Um, so therefore, um, they enlisted Tariq to basically coach him on the answers on what to say because, as we all know. Tariq is notorious for talking his way pretty much out of anything and everything or always has an excuse or always has something to try to get himself out of a situation. So essentially they had pre-sent over the list of questions that Jamel Hill was supposed to ask and Tariq coached him through those particular answers and responses and what he was supposed to say. Then the actual interview happens live 
with Jamel Hill and everything is going okay. She asks all the questions that Tariq had coached him through. However, she then goes off script and then starts talking about um, Ramirez, the dead detective, and also that his PBA card was in Ezekiel's wallet and that also the murder weapon was found on, um, you know, Jabari and this and that. And now they're trying to have a direct connection, essentially, to Zeke, the PBA card of Mar Ramirez, and Ramirez's gun killing Jabari. So now everything is a disaster because essentially now the police can call and have Zeke turn himself in because as of now... He's going to be the prime suspect of Jabari's murder um, with the assumption that they can link him to hiring Ramirez to do the job um, because Zeke was on record trying to say that Ramirez goes to all of his basketball games and does all this stuff. And essentially, they cross-referenced that information and Ramirez had never been to any of Zeke's basketball games. So that was fake news and that was exposed. And then during the interview, um, Tariq was at Lauren's house because now Lauren and him are official. They're like holding hands at class and all this other stuff. And so now they're watching the interview from her room and, you know, Tariq is freaking out. You know, at first Lauren's like, you know, these sound like your answers. And then the interview ends and Tariq is mad that they go off script towards the end. And so she's like, why are you so upset? And he's like, I know for a fact that Ezekiel didn't murder, you know, Jabari or Ramirez or anything. And she's like, well, how do you know? And then um, Tariq storms off. So then, you know, following back up with the family court case and trying to get custody of Yaz, Yaz is calling Tariq, trying to, you know, ask him essentially when they can connect, when she can live with him, that she's tired of living at her foster family's house and wants to be reunited with him and how much she misses mom as well. And so, you know, Tariq is telling her to be patient. And so then Melvin from The Cosby Show makes an appearance. Um, it sounded like he's either a court reporter or some sort of liaison in family court. And it looked as though Tariq had treated him to dinner to basically make sure that he's on his side for his family court date. Um, because now he is suing his grandmother for legal custody or petitioning for legal custody of Yaz. And then he is provided footage of the night. I'm guessing this is the night in question where um, his grandmother got the DUI or DWI. Um, there's footage of her going into a liquor store and getting all of this beer and or alcohol or whatever she was, whatever type of alcohol she was purchasing. Yaz somehow comes into the store and it shows the grandmother like shaking Yaz and telling her to basically go back to the car. And um, Yaz is upset and basically leaves the store. And I don't know how Tariq got that footage, but essentially he's going to use that to try to show that his grandmother is unfit to be the legal guardian of Yaz and that Yaz should um, basically go to him. I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of this because how is Tariq going to be full-time at an apartment with his little sister Yaz when he can barely be at his own place on campus and barely is on campus as it is because he's out and about doing all this other stuff. So I am trying to figure out how all of that logistically is going to work, but I guess more to come on that. So eventually Tariq's grandmother gets the petition that, you know, Tariq is essentially taking her to court to try to get legal custody of Yaz and everything breaks loose and, you know, she comes in and she is pissed and she blames Tariq for everything that's gone wrong in the family. She blames Tariq, you know, for Reina's death. She blames Tariq for his father's death. She just blames Tariq for everything wrong that has happened in the family and she feels like over her dead body is there's no way that Tariq is going to be getting, um, you know, going to be the legal guardian of Yaz. And, you know, Tariq said, let me pay for you to go to rehab so that you can get well because you are not healthy. You are sick. You have an issue. And she does not want to hear it. 
she's like i am i can't believe my own grandson is doing this to me and i will see your behind in court so um that is where we left off there um then of course um you know davis obviously confirms like i had mentioned at the beginning of the video that his retainer was paid for zeke and um then it ends up being that monet goes to um dante aka uh mecca to basically you know say thank you so much for you know paying for this and then of course the bomb drops that it's their son and essentially um dante is telling monet that they could have a nice life together that they can essentially um you know have this life together he can provide for her they don't have to stay at the house that they're at anymore that they don't have to hustle that they don't have to sell drugs that they don't have to do all this other stuff that they could live this happy life together except for mecca aka dante you are leaving out that you also are a drug kingpin as well um and that is one of your businesses that you are doing and Oh, by the way, you also happen to be in business with Monet's other son, Kane. Um, so how about that little tidbit? How about you guys are actually already in business together? Um, and then they like kiss or whatever after that. Um, but I just found that hysterical. I'm like, is this dude serious right now? Like, you're just going to keep that you guys technically are already in business together. And you're just going to keep that you're already working with her son. So then from there, um, you know, now all of a sudden that, you know, there's heat on Zeke about this Ramirez situation. Then all of a sudden, um, Kane then finally meets with Monet to tell her that, you know, he was the one that killed Jabari with Ramirez's gun, but then made it a point to say, but Tariq did the kill shot. <laughs> and so it was just it was just whatever but you know Monet of course is pissed because obviously she was lied to um and they were told you know she was told a bunch of times that nobody had anything to do with this and so he was like well you have all the smoke for me but where's the smoke for Tariq and so she's like well I'll deal with Tariq on my own time and address this however you need to turn up Ramirez's body because that is going to exonerate Zeke. That no longer puts him as a prime suspect for Jabari's murder because basically they can't pin this on, you know, Zeke hiring Ramirez if Ramirez was already dead. So now Kane has to essentially um, dig up the body so that the police can, you know, ID the body and ID that it's Ramirez and see how decomposed he is, that there is no way that obviously he would have been able to kill anybody because he was already dead. So for some reason, um, Kane takes Brayden with him on this little excursion for them to dig up the body and poor Brayden probably thought they were about to do another lick. They were probably about to do another robbery or do another drug deal or something of that sort. He was not anticipating digging up a decomposed dead body um, to be revealed for the police to ID. And then for some reason, um, they go back to Brayden and Tariq's place. And, you know, Brayden, he is just sick to his stomach. He is puking because he is just, he just can't believe like what he just did, what he just witnessed. And so then while he is puking in the bathroom, um, Kane decides to plant the badge of Ramirez for some stupid reason in Tariq's drawer and like wipes off the prints, which I do not understand why he couldn't just wipe that stuff off and place it on the body like they placed the um, badge, but it looks as though he's trying to plant something as backup as what Mecca has suggested to him because originally Kane's first stupid thought was to flee um, the town and it's like well that would just make you look more guilty if you suddenly just turn up missing 
So um, it just seems as though Cain does not want to own any of the mistakes, any of the disasters that he has done. And because he is so obsessed with Tariq, because he is so jealous of Tariq, he is looking for anything and everything to pin something on Tariq because he cannot stand the fact that Tariq is getting treated better by Monet and her family compared to Cain. But Cain fails to realize that he keeps making these mistakes. He keeps effing things up up which then leads for the family not to trust him to do anything so that's why they're more supportive of Tariq because Tariq just makes his moves and then there's no chaos but whenever Kate does stuff there's always chaos that ensues so or he completely goes about things the wrong way the messy way and he's too reactive and so then it was hilarious because in an earlier scene when um, Brayden was, you know, kind of, you know, in the getaway car and waiting for Kane to come back from, you know, his time in the trap house, um, and was talking to the guy that was about to pull a gun on him. And, you know, he was simply saying, you know, I'm here, I'm waiting for Robbie, Robbie, Ricky and Mike. And I was like, that was so hilarious because obviously that was a reference to new edition, but it was funny because obviously Kane, the actor, Woody played Robbie Brown on, um, you know, both specials and BET, the new edition story, as well as the Bobby Brown story. So I found that to be absolutely hilarious. Then also, um, what happens in this episode is, um, essentially from here, um, you know, Method Man and Sax, it seems like their storyline is going to be picking up, both with trying to free Lorenzo of this newfound information that there was a messy prosecutor back when he was convicted, as well as Sax sleeping with the opposition, um, who he can now obtain information about both cases and, you know, basically utilize that to his advantage, but essentially he's starting to get scared because he doesn't want it to make it seem as their tryst are just simply about him getting information although that's essentially what their trysts have turned out to be because she complains about work and he ends up getting some useful information out of it to help him since they are on opposing sides and so then he brings up, of course, the fact that now Tate's brother is on the task force um, now that he's promoted at the police station to now work with Kevin and work with her. And they have to look at the fact of how the optics of this case look of Zeke, of how hard they're going, you know, to make sure that this black man is the one who is convicted and has no history, has no parking ticket, has nothing on his record, is completely clean and has to look at the optics of that. So that interesting dynamic is going to be um, something to see on how all of these optics are going to play out. And how ultimately this, you know, situationship, this entanglement is going to end somehow with Sax and the opposition and who is going to come out on the other side of it. So I am curious to see um, what is going to come of that. Also, it was funny because Tate at one moment, you know, Carrie had given them the suggestion to go to bat for Zeke and to be seen as the hero. And that would equate to him getting elected and him getting, you know, a whole bunch of votes to see um, you be seen as the savior of the, you know, black basketball star at this prestigious college, except for when Zeke completely bombed the interview then Tate was like, you know what? I can't keep helping these people. I got to look out for myself and I can't, you know, put my name against anything else Zeke has got going on now. Now, all of a sudden that he has incriminated himself um, on this interview. So that essentially was everything that took place. We also saw that Lauren does have, you know, some sort of microphone recording device to detect audio on this watch. Tariq noticed she had a brand new watch and asked if it came from her family. And then when they were about to have sex, she essentially took off the watch and placed it in the bathroom and placed it like in the cabinet in the bathroom. Um, so then her and Tariq um, could have sex. But I do not foresee this, you know, recording device working out the way that Lauren thinks it's going to work out. And um, I am curious to see how her snitch era is going to go, if she's going to rat out her friends that she knows 
are doing drugs and how all of that is going to come to be. But it just seems like now we are on the precipice of a lot of things unfolding and um, a lot of secrets are about to come out and about to be exposed. And I cannot wait for the fallout and how all of this is going to come together as we unfold with the next set of episodes. So that is all I have. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Let me know what you guys agree, what you guys disagree on. Um, those of you, if it's your first time viewing my channel, welcome. Um, check out some of my other videos and other things I've reacted to, other things I've discussed on my channel. Those of you who've been back multiple times, um, have been in the comments, have been engaging. I am grateful. I am thankful. I am appreciative of each and every single one of you. I read all of your comments. I try to like or respond to everybody. Um, and I just, again, thank you so much for your support. Um, it really means a lot. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment that I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a happy rest of your day, and I will talk to you later.